Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing my updated Alila deck tech. This deck has actually undergone quite a lot of changes since the last time I did it. Like, I got a lot of new foils and I changed the deck quite a lot. I had a lot more creatures um, in the previous deck. This one is way more about artifacts and enchantments. About half, uh, not half of the deck, a little bit less than half of the deck is artifacts and enchantments. So I'm triggering off of Alila a lot. Um, yeah let's just jump into this um the deck is like pretty straightforward and i think you'll kind of see that um the deck will be listed in the down below as well um we're gonna run through the mana base pretty quickly i have two swamps black is the least represented color and then blue uh five islands and then um it's a pretty even split between that and planes i do run six planes um, so those are it for the basics. And then again, like I said, I'm not going to be spending that much time on the lands because they're really easy and cohesive. But um, first off, I have Arcane Sanctum. Got to have my colors, my Triland there. Then I run Pajukabog. Command Tower, of course, for me, it's an absolute staple. Then I have Drowned Catacomb. I forgot what this land cycle is called but i also have glacial fortress i believe that's also part of the same cycle and then i also have isolated chapel i believe these are all a part of the same um of the same cycle so these are great then i have um, I'm just going to do these again together. I have all three of the um, shock lands, of course. I will be getting the, um, I, or I want to get, is what I should say. I want to get the, um, what are they called? Um, the the new ones that are coming out, the full art ones from Infinity. Because I think they're really pretty. Um, so I have those. And then I have Esper Panorama, which I like. Then I have Evolving Wilds, and very similarly to that, I have Terramorphic Expanse. Then I have Fabled Passage, which I really, really like this land a lot. Fairy Conclave, because it's very fitting and on brand, and it gets me a um, fairy, which I like, and this art is really pretty. Then I have all three of the Fetch Lands pretty straightforward. The, this one is new to me. These are from the streets of New Capenna, I believe. These are the, um, I'm gonna zoom you guys in just a little bit. There we go. These are from, uh, streets of New Capenna, and I actually really like them a lot. They're basically a land that immediately fetches to go get another land, which I really enjoy, and you also gain a life, which is really nice, so. And then I have the Triland. I really love these Trilands a lot because they have the land type in them, which I think is really cool. Reliquary Tower because I actually have quite a bit of um, card draw in this deck. Um, I also run Roadside Reliquary, which I really, really like this card a lot. If you have an artifact and an enchantment, which is really easy to do, you can sacrifice it and you get to draw two cards. I really like this card a lot. And the last one I run is Tainted Field. Okay. So that is it for the mana base, 35 lands. If you know, you know, it's the sweet spot. Gotta have those 35 lands. I only run three creatures in the deck. The first one I run is Scion of Una. And this one, it gives your fairies plus one, plus one, which is great, but it also gives them Shroud, which is really incredible. I also really like, too, that this does affect Alila as well, so then Alila would have Shroud. There are a couple of ways to protect her in this deck, but just in case I don't have those. And I also like that it does come into the battlefield and it does have Flash. I also have Sour of Temptation, which is really great because that way I can um, take something from somebody, which I really like to do if I need um, a little bit of mana acceleration or I want to take the big threatening thing or whatever it is. I also have Vendillion Click, which I do really like that little bit of access to information. Um, this is a card that potentially might come out in the future, though, because I really am trying to maximize my artifacts and enchantments. So this might be something that comes out. But for now, it's in there. It's the Powerpuff Girls. We love it. So. Okay, um, then let's jump into sorceries. I have a couple of those. The majority of them are board wipes, and I'm kind of just going to group them together, I would say, all kind of in the same group because they all do really similar things. Um, there is one that I'll talk about a little bit um, differently, but I have I have a total of six board wipes, um, Merciless Eviction being the one that I'll, I'll hang tight onto for a second, but these are all, like I said, really similar. I've got Planner Cleansing and Hour of Revelation, 
which are very similar cards for um, three or for six mana. You get to destroy an online permanence. Not a whole lot to say there. They're great. Um, then I have Day of Judgment and then Supreme Verdict, which are very similar. And then I have Time Wipe, which I really like this one because it bounces a creature that you control, which would be very likely Alila, because um, all the other things are fairies. But I guess, actually, if I've got those other fairy cards that we just talked about, that might not be bad, and then you just all creatures. I really like this. I really, really, really like Time Wipe a lot. I think this is a really great board wipe for five mana. And then I have Merciless Eviction, which is very similar, but it does exile, and you only get to pick one. So you can exile all, all you know, creatures, whatever, whatever you need to. Um, it's a great card. I also have my Idealic Dick... I Deal. I cannot say that word. Tutor, which gets me to tutor for any enchantment that I want. There's some really, really, really great targets. So it's definitely a card that I want to have um, on hand. I love this card a lot. And the last um, sorcery I run is Ponder, because having a little bit of access to information is really cool. This might come out, though, because I actually have a near going to see that I have a lot of card draw. I was like going through and I was like, wow, I have a ton of enchantments that draw me cards and things like that. So this might come out in the future. I, not to say that I don't like I love this card, obviously, but I have um, I, I'm again, I'm trying to maximize artifacts and enchantments to trigger off of Alila. So, yeah, um, instance, let's jump into it. We've got Brainstorm again, pretty basic, pretty cohesive. Not a whole lot to say there. I then run um, Crush Contraband, which this one's one of my personal favorite cards. If I'm running white, I am running this card because I like the fact that it can exile an artifact in enchantment. Um, it is a little bit more like narrow. The card, I always forget the name that's really similar to this card, but it's four mana and it does like basically the same thing as this, but you could pick like artifact, artifact, enchantment, enchantment if you play it on your um, upkeep. Um, but that's not to say that I, um, I just happen to really like this card because it's instant speed and I can play it whenever I want to. So I like this card a lot. Then I run Cyclonic Rift. Pretty basic, not a whole lot to say. Overloading it, of course. Dig Through Time is another one that, of course, I love this card, but like I said, I'm probably going to have it come out because I have a lot of other card draw, um, card draw things. Then I have two no, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. I have three counter spells in this deck. The first counter spell I run is Disdainful Stroke. I just had a lot of these laying around. This actually hits quite a bit of things, and I like that it's tar any spell, and it is for or it is for greater. So it's slightly narrow in that way, but honestly, you're going to be able to hit a lot of stuff with that. Then I run Dovin's Veto, which I love this card. It cannot be countered, which is great. And it is countered on creature spell, but it, the fact that it says can't be countered makes this card absolutely incredible. And it's only two mana, which is really great. Then I run Enlightened Tutor because um, I absolutely need this card and it's perfect in Alila. If you are building Alila or you have Alila, I would definitely recommend picking up an Enlightened Tutor. Being able to tutor for any artifact or enchantment, which like I said, is the majority of the deck, is incredibly powerful. Um, and it's only one mana, which is awesome. Then I run Path to Exile and very similarly to run Swords to Plowshare. Pretty basic, not a whole lot to say there. These cards are great. Getting rid of something, um, exiling at instant speed for one mana is awesome. Then I run Reality Shift, which is probably one of my favorite, um, like, removal spells, I would say. Getting the chance to exile something that my opponents control at two mana, and then they get to manifest, which is, you know, a very small, inconsequential thing. I don't really care that they manifest and get that 2-2. You know what I mean? Card's great. And the last instant that I run is this little card called Rewind, which I really like this card a lot. It's basically a free spell, and I say that pretty loosely because you do have to have four mana, but the fact that I can untap it and then do something else with that mana is really, really great. It is four mana, so it's a little bit more expensive, but um, honestly, the curve in this deck is really low that I don't think it matters too much. Probably the part that we've all been waiting for, the artifacts and the enchantments. So let's jump into the artifacts. I'm going to run through a lot of these really quickly because honestly, guys, a lot of these are really, really simple. There are a lot of mana acceleration, all that kind of stuff. The first one is Arcane Signet, one of my personal favorite mana acceleration, one of my favorite rocks. It's two mana. It doesn't enter the battlefield tapped, and it gives me access to any of my colors. It's great. I'm just realizing now that I only have two of the signets in here. I actually don't know why. That's really confusing. I don't have the blue black one, which is Demir signet, which, oh, wait, this is actually really a funny story. I actually had traded for that card the other day, and um, apparently it needs to go in this deck, and I just didn't know where it was going. So anyways, I will be putting Demir signet in there to get me all the signets. I really like the signet. You basically use one mana to get 
one mana is basically the way that it works um but without with that being said i do like this because it gives me access to my colors um i could use one of my colorless lands to get me um colors that i need so and they trigger off of Alila. I mentioned the card draw cards, and this is one of the ones that um, that does that. Biden of Thassa is one of uh, my favorite ones because when a creature deals combat damage, you can draw a card. What's really awesome about this one is it does have this little ability stapled on here, which I don't really use very often, but what I really like about this one is that your your goal in this deck is to have a lot of fairies. So let's just say you have five fairies, including Alila, and they all do combat damage. That's five cards that you're drawing, which is incredible. So when we talked about the um, the card earlier that has no maximum hand size reliquary tower, that's kind of the reason that, you know, that's in there. Champion's Helm is a card that I don't think a lot of people know about because it's only ever been printed two times and it's actually pretty expensive. This card is really awesome though. It's three mana and then a cryptic creature gets plus two plus two, which is really good. But if it's legendary, which you're equipping this to Alila, it gives it hexproof. The equip cost is also only one, which I love. And if you have Alila on the field, it triggers off of her, which is great. So it gets you a fairy. Um, so it's kind of like protection for her, which is awesome. I love Champion's Helm. Chromatic Lantern. Not a whole lot to say there. It gives me access to all my colors and it taps for a mana. Dark Steel Plate. I wanted that little bit of protection um, in there. And so there's a couple of cards that do that. And Dark Steel Plate is one of them. It's also indestructible, so it can't be removed, which is really great. And it gives Alila indestructible. Then I have Expedition Map, so I can get access to any of my lands. I have quite a bit of cards like this that are... Um, gets me access to pumping my team. Hall of Triumph is one of the things, um, the tokens that Alila makes are blue, so you would choose blue. Very similarly to that, I have Heraldic Banner, which I like. You Same thing, you choose a color, you're going to choose blue, and it gives you access to uh, buffing your team. Those are just two examples of cards that bu buff um, the fairies that you make. Idol of Oblivion is a new card to me. Um, I think this card is really cool. You draw a card and you can only activate it if you've created a creature token this turn, um, which is very, very easy to do. And then you do have the sack ability, which I mean, I, I don't I, I don't know if there'd be an instance where I would get that off and I would do it, um, but there it's there just in case I need it. The main thing is gonna be drawing the card, um, which is really, really great. I have Lightning Greaves, and very similarly to that, I have Swiftfoot Boots as my way to protect Alila and to give her haste, which is really awesome. Mox Amber is really cool. I'm really excited to own this card. Um, this, to me, was a kind of like really awesome card to have in this deck in particular because the fact that I can have a Leela and then play this card and then it triggers off of her and then I can tap it immediately for zero mana I just thought was really really cool so yeah Mox Amber it's in there Obelisk of Esper very simple very straightforward it's a mana acceleration card Skull Clamp is really great in here. Um, the tokens that you do make are initially one ones, and then if you don't have any buffs for whatever reason, you can Skull Clamp those tokens, and then you get access to drawing two cards, which is really, really cool. Or honestly, even if not, there have been so many instances where like I'll have a Skull Clamped token, for example, and like let's just say I swing, and then you know the opponent kills that token or whatever, like the tokens are gonna die, so you're gonna get um you're gonna get triggers off of this card. Soul Ring. Staff of Domination is a newer card to me. I really like this card. It does a lot of different things. Tapping, untapping, gaining life. It's very easy to untap Staff of Domination. I, I think this card is really cool. Paul has it in his Karn deck, and I just kind of wanted to test it out and see how I liked it. I, again, I like how it does a lot of different things. Um, yeah. Then I have two of the Talisman cards. Again, I'm missing the third one, um, but hopefully that'll be fixed pretty soon. I really like these Talisman cards. Um, the ultimate goal, I would say, with these cards is to have them, you know, use them for colorless so that you're not doing damage to yourself. But if you really need um, access to the colors, you can obviously do that. I really like the Talisman cards a lot. Um, they're probably my favorite mana acceleration that gets me color uh, access to color mana. So these cards are great. Thought Vessel, I really love. It gives me no maximum hand size, and it enters with um, colorless, and it does enter the battlefield tabs, which is really cool. 
And the last one that I have the artifact in this video that I'm going to talk about is Vidalkin Ori. Making sure that, you know, what, what I really love about this card a lot in this deck in particular is I have a Leela out and then I can flash stuff. So let's just say I flash in my Thought Vessel, you know, someone swings at me, I can flash in my Thought Vessel, make a token, block with the token or whatever. Um, it just gives me access to that, which is really, really cool. So yeah, great card. I need to pick up the borderless one that I'm going to put this card to the side. So I remember that I need it on to put it on my list. Okay. Enchantments. It's the last stack of cards. I have quite a bit. And the first one that I have is all that glitters. This card is ridiculous. I was actually, the, the point in this deck is really to go wide. However, you can make a Leela super big and just punch someone. And this is what happened the other day when I was playing is I played all that glitters I think Alila got, oh my gosh, guys, plus seven, plus seven, I think. A couple hits from Alila with this card, and your opponent, you guessed it, is going to be dead. Absolutely love this card. It does trigger off of her as well, which is great. Um, yeah, plus one, plus one for each artifact and enchantment. This card is busted. If you're if you're building Alila, again, even if your plan is not to kill people with Alila, your plan is to go wide with fairy tokens, still run this card. It's great anointed procession absolutely thousand percent needs to be in this deck because you're going to be making a ton of fairy tokens getting access to double the fairy tokens is just absolutely incredible Argul's Bloodfast is just one of the card draw um, waves in this deck and again I like it because it does trigger off of Alila and you just get to draw cards bitter blossom oh yes I love bitter blossom um, you lose a bit of life, but you don't really care that much in the grand scheme of things, and you get access to a fairy token. These ones are black, so it's just something to note where the cards that we talked about earlier, like Hall of Triumph and stuff like that, those wouldn't get the buff if you picked blue in that instance because they are black. But honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, with Alila, they already get plus one, plus zero, oh, so they're already two ones, which is great. Coastal Piracy is really cool. It's very similar to Biden of Thassa. Whenever Kuchu Kindle does combat damage, you may draw a card. It does say may, just in case that's potentially relevant. Um, Again, if you've got five tokens or five dudes, whatever, swinging and then getting access to five cards is really great. And it's very easy, as I'm sure it's been able to know, to get, for example, five tokens. So Favorable wins absolutely a thousand percent needs to be in this deck because your team gets plus one, plus one, and it's with flying. So it's 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 your entire deck your entire deck has flying you know and then getting plus one plus one is great again you're trying to go wide you're trying to build your team and make them super big and favorite ones helps get you there ghostly prison is kind of there for that little bit of protection and kind of just there to be annoying and to make your opponent's life annoying which is great um making sure they have to pay two mana for each creature they control can really stop them from um from attacking you um and doing a lot of damage Glorious Anthem, there's really not a whole lot to say with this card. It's a pretty basic um, buffing your team. There's a couple of those that we'll get to in a minute. Greed, very similar to Argyle's Bloodfast. It gives me access to drawing cards, but it is only one mana. It's kind of one of those like Argyle's and Greed are very similar to me. It's like Argyle's is great because it's two mana to play. So it's great in the early, early game. And then it's two mana for each card. And this one's four mana and then one mana for each thing. So yeah. Imprisoned in the Moon is one of my personal favorite removal spells because you can do this to someone's commander and they literally can't respond. Um, the only way to do it is to get rid of the Imprisoned in the Moon so you can turn someone's uh, commander into a, um, let's see, colorless land, which is really funny. And um, it is, it is, you know, land. It is also Planeswalker. So if that's the most threatening thing, but the majority of the time you're going to be targeting someone's, uh, um, what's it called? Someone's uh, commander. Inspiring Leader is a newer card, and this card is absolutely ridiculous. If you control your commander, basically creature tokens get plus two, plus two. So let's just think about this for a second. You have a token. Um, let's just say Alila is on board, right? And then you play this. That token that you've just played with this card and Alila is a 4-3. And that's saying that you don't have any other artifacts or any other enchantments, you know, that buff your team. So, for example, that, like, Glorious Anthem that we had, you know, they got plus one, plus one. So, right off the bat with this card, they're 4 threes with Alila, which is absolutely busted. I love this card. If you're building Alila, pick it up. It's very cheap. It's a great card. Intangible Virtue is another kind of no-brainer card because not only do they get plus one, plus one, but they also get Vigilance, which is great. You can swing into people and then um, have them later on to block and they get the buff. Absolutely. These are like, you could do a lot with this deck. You can run a lot of different artifacts and enchantments. These are some that I would just run. No questions. 
Leyland of Anticipation because very similarly to Vidal Canori, I like having access to Flash. I like being able to play my stuff at instant speed whenever I want. Military Intelligence is a cool card. It says whenever you attack with two or more creatures, you get to draw a card. Now, this one is um, cheaper than cards like Coastal Piracy or Biden of Thassa, but what's really cool about this card is that you attack with two or more, um, which is very, very easy to do. That's a Leela and one other token, you know, which, again, if you have a Leela on board and you play this, you've gotten a token already, you know what I mean? So, um, yes, and it's only two mana, which is great. I love Mirror Maid a lot. Um, this is probably one of my favorite enchantments of all time. It enters the, the copy as any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. Now, it doesn't say you control. So this card can be literally anything. I don't have, I want to say it's called Sculpting Steel. That's the one that's one mana. That's an artifact. And I think it's only ones you control. Um, that one's also really good. I think it's called Sculpting Steel. I'm like picturing it in my head. Um, that card's also very good. This card I really like too. It's three mana, but it's anything. So if, let's just say you're like, oh, I really want to make it a copy of my um, intangible virtue or like whatever it is, you can have it enter the copy as anything. But it's again, not you control. So if someone has something better, you can just make it um, a copy of something they control, which is great. And I love that it's artifact or enchantment. I love this card. Nevermore is comical. I adore Nevermore. It's one of the ways to stop commanders. You basically say, I'm going to name their commander, and then it makes it so they cannot cast their commander. I absolutely love this card. I think it is highly underplayed. It's a very, very cheap card. It's only ever been printed one time, and I think that's partially why, but I love this card. You name someone's commander and they can't play it. It's great. Radiant Destiny um, is, you know, you choose the creature type, you choose fairies, and then as long as you control creatures um, con of that chosen type get plus one plus one. And if um, you have a city's blessing, which is very easy to do in this deck, um, they gain vigilance, which is great. It's very similar to Intangible Virtue. It is one more mana, um, but honestly, it's just another thing to do, um, you know, to buff your team and to give them vigilance, which is cool. Rally the Ranks, we've talked about cards that are so incredibly similar to this. You choose a creature type, you choose fairies, and then they do get plus one plus one. There's really not a whole lot to say. We've seen very similar cards to this, but this is just another one that does that. And the last card I have in this deck is Ristic Study, um, because I really like to draw cards. And um, yeah, not a whole lot to say there. Guys, that is everything for my Alila deck tech. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this deck. This deck is really, really fun. Um, I really, really like this deck a lot. It makes fairies. It, you know, kills people really, really quickly. You can build a team. And just the fact that you could have like four fairies that are each, you know, five fours. And then that's 20 damage right there. Not, not including Alila, you know what I mean? So it's a great deck. Um, yeah, that's it for me in this video. If you guys enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And I'll catch you in my next one.